Hello everyone and welcome to the 2021 Initiation Portal. In this powerful ceremonial space, we recognize that during today's catalyzing times, humanity is once again gaining access to wisdom that has been hidden away, suppressed and shamed for millennia. Our presenters and performers have gathered here to provide an immersion into the ancient knowledge that has been lost for so long. As you attend, you are invited to open up your senses to the art, to the music, the powerful practices, and more, and open up your awareness to the unseen and numinous realms. Allow these workshops and, and performances to shift your consciousness and guide you into entirely new dimensions of what you perceive possible to create, embody, and transform. I am your host for this event, Jocelyn Mercado, the founder of Sacred Planet. And today I am honored and excited to welcome Cater Brown. Hi, Cater. Hey, Jocelyn. Great to be here. Thank you so much for being a part of this event. And yes. yeah, and let me introduce you to everybody here. So Cater Brown is an internationally acclaimed ceremonialist and cowrie shell diviner, a healer, intuitive and teacher of psychological and spiritual awareness with over 35 years of professional experience. Cater has developed an effective and unique approach to emotional and spiritual healing by braiding together his depth of clinical knowledge with more nature-based indigenous wisdom teachings and ritual healing methods from around the world. He is the founder and director of Rites of Passage Council, an organization offering nature-based ceremonial encampments and training programs. Cater is known for his ability to blend many creative and expressive forms of depth psychology with more ancient methods of healing through vision quest ceremonies, sweat lodge ceremonies, rites of passage experiences, and personalized ceremonies and rituals. He lives in the highlands of Western North Carolina in Asheville. And you can visit his websites, www.caterbrown.com or ritesofpassagecouncil.org to learn more about his work. So, Cater, your topic for today is Water and Ash, Ancestral Helping Spirits and Generational Healing for All Our Relations. And we really need this right now. <laughs> we really yes, yes, we do. need to connect in these <clears throat> ways. Um, so could you share just to begin, um, maybe one or two key learnings that you've had? I'm sure this could be a very long answer, but over the, over the years as you've, as you've come into doing this work um what are one or, what are one or two key learnings that you would share with our audience let's say the probably the number one key learning is that the the other world as it's sometimes called or the the luminous realm um the helping spirits the ancestral helping spirits um are very available and very present uh, to working with us and that in my own ancestral lineage we have this uh, old proverb that says that the troubles in this world can only be healed from the other world and the troubles in the other world can only be healed from this world and so with that there's this uh, reciprocal relationship or understanding of uh, tending the fires here and tending the fires there that the work we do here helps those there heal and the work that they do help us heal. Um, and so my experiences uh, have been very uh, palpable and, and uh, real in this, in this middle world of interactions um, with helping spirits and, and how they really show up. So I wanted to, in this, in this experience, to, to dive into and hopefully open some doors for folks to connect with uh, they're helping spirits and provide some context and understanding and, and then do a, a deeper dive into that. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. I know that was such a turning point for me in my journey. I, I always felt so alone in the world. In my teenage years and in my 20s, I felt so alone. And when I realized that we are each surrounded by protection and guidance mm -hmm. and support, it just that really changed everything for me mm -hmm. when I finally realized that at a very deep level. So, wow, well, I'm excited you're going to take us there today. Yeah, it's like it's, it's um, I mean, of course, so many stories I could share that would take us down the, the length and breadth of our time. But, um, you know, we're, we're talking about something that's not just a conceptual framework of, of belief systems, 
uh, but really a pathway and connection of support um, and wisdom um, that's available. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I have one more question for mm -hmm. you before you get right into your presentation, which is what is your vision for 2021 and beyond? I was thinking about your question before I came on and I thought about all these things about social justice and economic justice and anti-racism and, you know, all these large systems change, which is of course going to be wonderful. Um, and then I thought, you know, that's not what I want to share with the people. What I want to say is if one of you watching this, uh, steps to the frontier of your own dreams in this next year and lives that. And I don't know which one it will be. Maybe it'll be more than one. Um, but I really want to call up the, the faith and the belief and the accountability to those that are watching and listening, um, because you wouldn't be watching this if you weren't standing at a threshold um, of some kind in your life. And the courage to step across that threshold into what can feel like and often is the unknown. Um, but it's the unknown, it, it, that's where grace finds us. That's where spirit meets us. It doesn't meet us in the cleverly choreographed, predictable experiences of our life. Um, so that's my encouragement and that's my challenge to, uh, to the viewers watching this, that you not just walk away from this um, asking yourself, what does it all mean? but ask yourself, hmm, what action can I take, you know, today, this week, and start doing that? That would be my vision. If that thread, if that, that small activation happens, um, that would be great. That's what changes systems and worlds. Yes, that's what changes everything. Yeah, I got to start from the roots up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, wow, thank you for that. Well, I will, I will let you begin then with your presentation and uh, yeah can't wait to experience it okay thanks jocelyn thank you all right so um i want to offer first some gratitude and gratitude uh to uh today actually is um indigenous people's day and so i want to offer gratitude to the indigenous peoples of all our relations all across the, the globe that have carried the ancient ceremonies and ways of, of listening across that, that liminal space that, um, and being able to relay that information back and forth. Um, so yeah, I just want to offer that gratitude and acknowledgement uh, on this day, Indigenous Peoples Day, um, for all those medicine ancestors. Um, yes, thank you, Cater. And yeah, I welcome everybody listening to just tune in whether you know the names of the uh, ancient people who or indigenous people who lived on the land where you are standing or sitting right now, whether you know their names or not, um, just to really take a moment to honor and, and, and thank them. Yeah. And also to re realize that we, you know, we each have strands of indigenous roots. Um, for some of us, we have to go far back to get them, but they're woven in there. They're woven in our ancestral memory in our DNA memory. Um, and so the, these ancient ways of connecting with ancestors, um, connecting with the elementals and nature and the spirits of nature, um, these are things consistent across the planet if, when you go far enough back. Um, and yeah, and offering gratitude to those ones that have kept those forms of communication and connection alive. Uh, the, so the rest of us can learn how to remember as well. Absolutely. So, all right. Well, I'd like to begin with the invocation. Um, given the uh, the topic um, of uh, water and ash, ancestral helping spirits, and generational healing for all our all our relations, all our people. Um, this concept of water is life, and ash. We say when you offer ash with your left hand, that it shows up as fire in the realm of the ancestors. It's, it's that which is at the border between this world and the other world, ash. 
Um, and so ash communicates into that realm. Water brings life into this realm. So water and ash sit opposite each other across that uh, fire um, between the ancestors and the living. Um, so I want to begin with the invocation. And that is that, uh, you know, in, in doing this kind of work, um, it's important to re remember to stay focused and stay humble and um, know that we're not alone. So with the invocation, we first acknowledge the, all the ways in which we're not alone and asking for guidance and assistance to, to give, well, at least in this case, give me something adequate to, to say that will be helpful for this interview. So, as you hear the rattle, I invite you to close your eyes <clears throat> and let your spirit go to a place in nature that you know well a place in nature that knows you well. Once you arrive there, I want you to see yourself standing in this place at sunrise. I want you to turn and face the rising sun cresting over the horizon And we turn our attention to the east, to the sun, to the good medicine people of the east, to the spirits, the allies, and the guardians of the east, and of springtime, of new beginnings, of fresh new starts. The good medicine in the east that reminds us of how to see things for the first time every time how to look in, in the mirror into our own eyes as if we've never seen ourselves before so that the mystery of who we are can reignite within our own eyes. To look in the eyes of our lovers, our children, our friends, our colleagues with the eyes of the East. Letting go of those old stories. The stories that drown out the mystery that each one carries the beauty that we each carry. So we call upon that good medicine of the East, that place of new beginnings and springtime and bright colors, joy and inspiration and connection. A place that teaches us how to show up. To all the good medicine of the East, we acknowledge you, we welcome you, Ashe. I invite you now to turn in to the south, quarter turn to the right and face south in this place of nature that you stand. Turning towards the noonday sun, arcing in the sky toward the season of summer and the deep green vegetation of summer to the season of fire and the element of fire, the grandfather fire and the transformational medicine of fire. Turning toward the place of action and beauty and courage and playfulness and passion. Turning towards that fire within ourselves, a place where you're willing to stand in the center of your own truth, the place where your words and your thoughts and your feelings and your actions are exactly the same. So impeccability and integrity. To creativity, that place of bringing into manifesting the vision that we had in the east in the spring. And to all the good medicine people of the south, we call upon your good medicine to awaken within each one of us that bone memory where you live as well. Ashe. In quarter turn to the right, we face west. 
toward the setting sun, toward the turning autumn leaves, bright colors overhead and on the ground as they are right now, toward the element of water and healing and reconciliation and forgiveness, the sacred feminine. Toward initiation and change and transformation. We call upon all the good medicine of the West. We thank you and we invite you into this council to assist us and awaken within each one of us that bone memory where you live as well. Ashe. Quarter turn to the right, we face north. Mm, turning towards the sacred mountain, the spirit of winter, the story keepers, sitting by those warm hearth fires on a winter's night, sharing a meal with friends. We call upon the good medicine of the north that teaches us how to let go, not be attached, how to stand in our sovereign even if we're the only one standing there. That place in the spirit of the winter that teaches us about surrender and prayer and gratitude. That razor's edge between grief and praise or grief and gratitude that we often find there at the winter's gate of surrender and letting go. To surrender so completely The spirit of spring shows up simply because we let go enough. The grace can enter our lives once again because we let go enough. And to all the others in the north, we acknowledge you. We welcome you to this council and ask that you assist in awakening within each one of us that bone memory where you live as well. Okay. We look skyward. Hmm, grandmother moon, grandfather sun, our star sisters and brothers and others. We thank you for shining down your light upon us. Shining as a beacon of light and reminding us of how to do that as well by the way we live our lives so that you could see us from out there. Grandmother Moon, we thank you in these challenging times for reminding us of how to own those things that we have kept in shadow, those things that we have rather not talked about or faced. And we thank you for bringing those shadow elements that we have held on this planet into the light and shining the light on them. helping to heal those places of shame and challenge. Grandfather Son, we thank you for showing up every day and teaching us about falling down seven times and getting up eight, always eight. And to the great mystery, to expansiveness and wonder and curiosity and limitless possibility of the great above. We thank you for that reminder that the center of all things is everywhere. The center of all time is now. The Sky Nation, we call upon you this day to awaken that spark of stardust, starlight within each one of us, that bone memory where you live as well, I hope. And in that place in nature now, I ask that you bend down, put your hands on the earth, or lie down, put your belly on the earth. And say the word, thank you. Thank you, Mother, for reminding us of home when we feel homeless and lost. 
thank you for clean water, clean food for the children and elders. Thank you for teaching us about balance and how to walk in balance. And those reminders that scarcity is an illusion spun by a culture that has long forgotten how to live in balance. Thank you for those reminders that there are no borders of division to the condor or the eagle. That we are all one people, human and non-human people. That we all have one home. So we reach out to the spirit of Gaia, the Pachimama, Mother Earth, and ask that you awaken within each one of us that place of belonging, a place of home, a place of connection, and that we may, may learn to offer that to each other. Much gratitude, Ashe. And to our ancestors, to the seven generations behind us and beyond, and those seven generations that are in front of us and forward, we acknowledge you this day. And those ones on whose shoulders we stand, we thank you for your laughter, your teardrops, the footprints and the heartbeats buried in the ground, for your dreams and visions, for your stories. For those ancestors that live in front of us, yet to arrive here on this physical plane, but yet watching us carefully to see how we live our lives down here so they will know what to do when they get here. We thank you for that incredible trust. May we be worthy of it. And we thank you for that accountability. May we walk into it with integrity. And after our ancestors that you wish to name silently to yourself or out loud in the room where you sit, you speak their names now to yourself. We call upon those ancestors that are well in spirit, those that lived well and died well, and those bright and shiny ones that can assist us with the work that we have here to do at this time in our lives. And for those troubled ones, and the work we do here also be a blessing, a, a cool drink of water, passage on the across the great divide, across the great river for you, so that you may find your way home. With much gratitude, we acknowledge you and welcome you, Moshe. And to the spirits of the lands of which you surround you right now, the spirit of the rivers that flow around you, where you live, the mountain spirits that watch over you, the standing tall people that may be right outside your door, the plant medicine people that grow in the valleys and the fields, the swimmers in the rivers and crawlers in the ground and on the ground, the four-legged and two-legged and winged ones of the lands in which you are surrounded by. Take a moment to offer gratitude to those mountains and rivers and fields and forests and parks. Much gratitude, we acknowledge you and we welcome you. Okay. And to the great council that sits on the other side of the fires that we hold, stirring the coals and keeping them hot. 
We thank you for tending those fires on that side. We thank you for watching over us, for believing in us, even when we stumble and have a hard time believing in ourselves, each other. Thank you for keeping those fires going and may the way in which we keep the fires burning on this side continue to be a blessing to all our peoples, human and non-human peoples. Okay. All right. This takes me a minute to kind of get back, but in a way, given the nature of this particular uh, talk, we want to keep the door open. We don't necessarily want to open our eyes and bring ourselves all the way back. Let's imagine, uh, well, when I say imagine, I'll say let's imagine that we opened the door just then and extended an invitation uh, of, of coming in and the blessing going out uh, to a great deal of support and wisdom guidance. Um, somebody said to me not long ago when they were telling me about an experience they had having opened such a door. And they said, well, what if I'm just making this up? What if it's my imagination? I said, you know, the, um, the imaginal realm is the realm in which spirit communicates with us. It can't use a pure language or we wouldn't quite understand probably. So the imagination and our ability to uh, step into that imaginal realm gives us access to how com uh, spirit communicates, how ancestors communicate with us. So the images and the sights, the sounds, the smells, the um, you know, all of our senses, that alive place um, is the, the communication grounds. Um, so let your imagination go um, and don't worry about making it up. It's all, it's all good anyway. <laughs> so we've opened the door. Um, I want to go back and talk about, you know, this, this uh, 2021 and, um, you know, as a rites of passage guide, um, I've been tracking and, and noticing this, this global um, quest that we've been cast into, this global initiatory process that uh, for, for many were, were cast into unknowingly. You know, as I say, with, with initiation, when somebody asked me one time, well, what if I don't want to do like an initiation or what if I don't want to do like a rite of passage? I said, but well, don't worry. You will anyway. You either, <laughs> you'll do it voluntarily and intentionally or involuntarily and unintentionally, but you will be going. It's an, uh, if, if you're alive, you will be going through these passages, through these thresholds. Uh, and we live in a time where in a global, we, we're, we are crossing a global threshold. And I say crossing a threshold because, uh, you know, the severance phase of the initiatory passage comes and we begin to, to lose and let go of intentionally or, or it gets pulled away or sometimes taken away these beliefs and understandings we've held about who we are, how we live, and we're severed from those things. And then we're, all of a sudden, we're in that wilderness time. You know, we're uh, Muhammad on the mountain or... Jesus in the desert, or crazy horse in the desert, or, or Buddha under the Bodhi tree. We're in that threshold phase uh, after things have fallen away. Um, that, that alone time on the mountain. And that's how I've seen much of this, this year. Once we step in, into this threshold, um, and in this threshold phase, um, you know, in, in the old initiations, there was no guarantee of survival. And, and sadly, that, that is the case globally in this initiatory process. There are many um, that are not surviving the initiatory passage. Um, some will leave because they can help us better from the other side. Um, some will get caught up in not being prepared to, for the 
for this crossing and won't make it, as in we've seen. Um, but in the threshold passage of the initiatory experience, the thing that uh, we are called to do, to, to reach beyond our own limited capacity to dream, our own limited capacity to uh, pull up some kind of resourcefulness, um, to navigate the territory of the, not just the territory of the unknown, but literally the territory of the unknowable. Um, like, how do you navigate that? And so to, to reach out to something uh, greater than ourselves, um, whatever we call that, uh, through invocation as we just did, uh, through rites of passage, initiatory quests in the wilderness, or vision quests, or a vision fast, or hill walking, or walkabout, whatever the method of the uh, of going into the into the wilderness and reaching out and calling out for something um, beyond ourselves that can assist us. As uh, Joseph Campbell said, you know, the, the greatest thing in the universe cannot be named. And the second greatest thing are all the names we give the first one. <laughs> so this, uh, we all have a name for it. Um, I, I do like great mystery because it just kind of points to the nameless thing, uh, the nameless energy that's, uh, that's available. And the other thing we all have are ancestors. And um, from, an, uh, from an ancient old way perspective, having relationship with ancestors was as palpable and necessary as having relationship with the people that lived in your house with you. Um, and so in, in many modern societies, we've lost those threads of understanding that when somebody's gone, um, you know, we, we may think about them occasionally, uh, may grieve their loss, and but to consider that after a time that they would actually be available to assist us, um, that's a whole nother, a whole nother matter. Um, but yet that's what we're, that's what this is about. Um, again, water is of life, ash is of the spirit. And so water and ash together speak of this, this coming together at this, this liminal gateway um to connect um and so the healing uh it's about you know memory belonging and healing i think those are the the key words that come to my mind that are needed at this time um in ritual and ceremony when there's trouble in this world in this middle world when there's trouble in the middle world the understanding is you don't go directly at the middle world to try and remedy it initially. You actually turn your attention uh, to the other world and you look there to see where the trouble is because if there's trouble here, there's already been trouble there. And so this turning attention there to respond with prayer, to respond with ritual is a way to begin the relational alliance in connection with the ones there uh, to help the ones here. And as in that, uh, that old Irish proverb, when it says the troubles in the other world, the troubles in this world, we need each other. There's a um, indigenous understanding. And I, when I say the word indigenous, I'm just, I use it not to mean people, but a, to mean uh, original um, in that way of, of hearing the word. There's an, an original blueprint of knowing that, um, that we come into this world from the realm of ancestors. And we come here carrying a gift of medicine that's needed. Some will call it a purpose, uh, a gift, a purpose. Uh, what's my soul's calling? There's a lot of names for it. I like the idea of medicine because it means there's something, there's something that needs healing here. Um, and so this, this medicine we carry, um, that we come here to deliver that, that we would have made uh, agreements with certain ancestral helping spirits 
that also carry that same medicine. And keeping those relational connections alive is essential in the delivery of who we came here to be. So this connection, um, again, is not just a conceptual idea of, of uh, generational association. It's like, um, this is my team of, of support that helps me do what I need to do here. Um, and so I wanna speak specifically in this case about our, our lineage, blood lineage ancestors. Now we can talk about soul lineage ancestors, blood lineage, but, but uh, your, your four major bloodlines. And I realize some people are adopted, that's okay, you just get more. Um, <laughs> there's plenty of ancestors to go around. You get, you get bigger family. Um, but for the, for the context of, of simplicity, let's just think about the four, essentially four major lines of ancestral threads that we each carry. And that each one of those lines um, carries a blessing specific to the line, carries teachings specific to the line. Um, and those teachings and blessings are held by the ones who lived well and died well, the ones that are well in spirit. So there's this, in, in, um, in often in ancestral uh, reverence cultures, they do delineate between the dead, the simply being dead, and an ancestral helping spirit. They, an ancestral helping spirit is certainly dead, but being dead doesn't make one an ancestral helping spirit. You know? So that Uncle Joe, who was you know, racked with trauma and pain and alcoholism, doesn't automatically become an ancestral helping spirit. Um, and in our modern society, we have lost connection to the, to the ancient uh, grief rituals upon death and uh, what we could call them the, the rituals of ushering the dead home, or as um, one of my teachers, Melodoma, says that the ancestralization of the dead, these ways of ensuring the passage um, again, in, in my own lineage, it would have began like in the Irish tradition, as in many traditions, there are these three days of grief, um, before the church got involved and before medical establishments got involved, you usually spent those three days with the body, um, in ceremony. And part of that where the, where the grief was encouraged uh, in, in the old Irish tradition were called the keening, the, those keeners, they would keen or wail. And, and the, the, the medicine of the people that, the, or the people that carry that kind of medicine would come into the house um, and begin to keen, begin to, to coax the grief out of the walls, out of the people, out of the living, out of the dead and, and move it. Um, and then over time that got uh, suppressed by, at least in Ireland, by the Catholic Church and kind of squashed um, and taken over by the church because it was, you know, very emotional, out of, out of control, in a good way, out of control, needed to be out of control. Um, so that's just one example, but across, you know, uh, across the planet and in many cultures, um, in many modern societies, I know there are many that still maintain uh, practices of, of grief rituals and ancestralization rituals of some kind, but um, but we've lost that way of attending to our own grief, and in so doing, grief becomes a hungry ghost that travels through family systems, um, and then uh, so this. Um, how do we heal this? How do we heal? Um, because the traumas that we do to the planet and to each other is the result of unresolved trauma. Um, and so until we look at that, until we heal that, until we attend to that, give voice to that, um, I think then this, in this day and age, we're actually giving voice to the, uh, the, the symptomatic oppression that is the result of unresolved trauma. 
um, that we see throughout the world and the systemic oppression and racism and all these other ways of oppression. Um, these are the results of, of unresolved trauma. Um, and so again, changing systems is, is certainly where we want to go, but to begin with ourselves, what are the, what are the rituals of, of tending that I can do with myself, with my ancestors, um, to assist in the healing um, of simply myself and those around me? Um, so this, um, so this concept of working and working with ancestors. Um, so let me think of uh, um, a, a story to exemplify it that's rather short. Um, I was doing a divination with, uh, with a person. I was doing it online like this, and they lived over in the UK. And um, they shared a story with me, and they said, you know, when I, I just got this house, this home, and this land, and I thought I would, you know, create this retreat center and have all these beautiful things happening there. And, uh, but every time I go home, I feel terrible. I feel depressed. I feel lethargic. Um, and when I leave, I feel good. Like, I don't understand what's happening. Um, it's not the place. It, didn't, it doesn't feel like what I had envisioned it being like. Um, and I said, well, um, we did the divination. And what came up in the divination, um, I said, well, uh, we'll say his name's Phil. So, well, Phil, um, you know, is there, do you, do you live near a cemetery? And he said, yes. Okay. I said, okay. Um, I think there's something happening there and interfering with your home. Uh, and then I said, I saw the image. Now we talked about, Lowa was talking about the imaginal realm as being the, where how spirit connect, connects with us. Um, it's like when, uh, <clears throat> The, when we feel inspiration, that spirit saying yes, kind of prodding us. We call it inspiration. <laughs> so anyway, when when uh, in working with this with Phil, I said, you know, I got this image, Phil. It just came out of nowhere, which is another kind of hint when it kind of interrupts my thought process. And I saw this shovel going to dark, moist soil. This the 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 what they call a spade over there, we would call a shovel, but the spade going into the earth and the earth was moist and it was near a tree. Um, and in my image, I saw the earth turn over and I saw some bones. And I said, this is gonna sound strange to you maybe, Phil, but did, uh, is there a place on your property where the water kind of seeps out of the ground near, near a whole tree? And he said, yeah. I said, well, has anyone, ever been buried on your property <laughs> you know it's you know in, in England things have been old and unregulated for you know could be and he said funny you should ask he said there's a story that came with the house it was about 150 years ago there was a couple that lived here and um, they couldn't have a child and they, the woman eventually got pregnant uh, but she got pregnant out, outside the marriage and the couple decided to keep the child. The child didn't survive. And the child was, um, I think they call it failure to thrive these days, but it's just the child didn't make it after birth, lived a very short time. And the story was that they just buried the child here on the land. And we were talking, I said, that's a pretty significant story, John. I mean, Phil. <laughs> and I said, uh, we talked about it a minute and then Phil said, he said, oh, you know what? He said, I'm that child. He said, I was born out of wedlock and my mom and dad kept me. He was the kid. Now I may not have been that kid, but I said, well, Phil, no wonder you're there. You're the person who is most equipped to do this healing work and help this the soul crossover and, and also heal what's happened there on the land. And in the process, heal something in you. Um, and so it's fascinating how that, 
uh, how we get called into these situations. I've countless stories similar to that one where there's uh, working with uh, either the, those well in spirit or the unwell dead to, to remedy something. Um, but a couple of things to note, because I want to take you on a journey. You have to remind me how much time we have so I can um, do the journey with everyone with enough time. How much time we have left right here, Jocelyn? Yeah, sure. We have, I mean, we could go for anywhere between 10 to 25 more minutes, depending okay. on how much you need. Okay. <laughs> I can easily go that long. <laughs> so I have to rein myself in. Um, so important pieces when working with ancestors. Um, you just don't call in anybody. You know, I say that's like going into the pub at 2 a.m. and inviting everybody home with you. You know, you you may get a couple of good good sorts, but likely there's not going to be many many there that's going to be much helpful, even if they want to be helpful. <clears throat> and so when you're journeying, we'll do a journey in a minute <clears throat> to connect with an ancestral helping spirit, and I'll give you a ritual to do following up to that journey. Um, the, the one thing when working with ancestral helping spirits to ask is, um, uh, one, are you my, are you my ancestor? Um, are you well in spirit? And will you help me? Those are kind of the three guiding questions. How you know that you're actually working with a helpful ancestral helping spirit is that, um, they don't need anything from you. They're there to help. They're not going to have a laundry list of things for you to do or people to talk with. Um, they're there to assist you. So <clears throat> that's the one litmus test. Because I've had people come to me and give me these stories about they've been contacted by so-and-so and they saw this image and it was very real and they, they had them doing all these things. And I said, that you don't work with them. Um, so one, you work with your own ancestral helping spirits because th more than any other spiritual entity, they have your well-being center, center focus. You know, it'd be like your, your great, great grandmother is not concerned with what happens in the world, they're only concerned with you. Um, so when you go to them, that's, that's the attention. <clears throat> So uh, connecting with an ancestral helping spirit um, and accessing the blessing, the teaching, um, and, um, and then making a request. So I'd like to um, take you on a short journey to do that. I think I'll use, the, usually use a drum for this, but I don't think the drum does very well over, over Zoom. I think the rattle may do better. Yeah, I think the rattle does a lot better than the drum. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to use the rattle. <clears throat> so I'm going to um, set up the journey first, and then I'll rattle for a while while you journey. Um, and the rattle will have a rhythm that sounds like... Like that. And at some point, I'll change the rhythm to it'll speed up. When it speeds up, that's an indication to, to come back from your journey. Uh, so we're going to do a journey to the realm of the ancestral helping spirits. We'll call this a upper world journey, meaning that in the realm of the ancestral helping spirits, there are no uh, bad energies. You know, there may be some you don't understand, but if, you're, if the intent is, I want to connect with um, an ancestral helping spirit in one of my lines. Um, what I would ask you to do as you're listening to me is consider for a moment your bloodlines. Consider the one that you, you think is the healthiest, the one that comes to mind. Maybe it's just an intuitive sense. Um, that, that you have, you have a, a resonance with or a good feeling with this particular line. Um, and also when we, when we journey to the realm of the ancestral helping spirits, we're not simply going to connect with the most recent dead, um, wouldn't eliminate them, but that's not the intention. Oftentimes you connect with somebody you don't know way down the line. And, um, 
and the other thing I like to help people is the one that you connect with is uh, not simply the one that happens to be available on a Monday afternoon, has nothing else to do and says, oh, I'll go, I'll go check and see what Jocelyn wants. I'm not doing anything. See, what, see what's up with her. <laughs> it's the one that carries the medicine that you carry. So that like the, we'd say the relationship has already been made and connected. You're just remembering. So you're connecting with one that carries the, the blessing and the medicine that you came here to deliver. <clears throat> so um, let the, since I'm just talking to you, do you have a line in mind? Think of an ancestral line, mother's mother, mother's father, father's mother, father's father, one of those four lines. And um, for those that are adopted, it's let this be an imaginal intuitive choice and journey. You don't have to know, you just let yourself intuitively be guided to which one. And then once you have one, um, then I want you to, to think of uh, traveling, journeying, like dream, we, the Cherokee would say dreaming or journeying or spirit travel. You can use your, see it as your imagination, but you see yourself traveling up. You can go up the, the branches of a, of a tree. You can see yourself flying on the back of a hawk. You can travel up uh, the, the, the heat or the, uh, of a candle as it rises. Something that goes up. And as you, uh, once we start the journey, you'll see yourself going up. You'll see yourself passing through or feel like you pass through a membrane of some kind. And, um, but your intent, it's like, is that I'm, I'm journeying to the realm of the ancestral helping spirits. That's, that's the intent of where you're headed. Um, at, some time, at some point, you'll get there. Um, and uh, you'll have a sense of recognition. It's like, it feels like the place, or you just, you notice um, something that tells you this is the place. <clears throat> and then at that point, you um, identify yourself. So if, if I was doing a journey, and if I was going down my um, mother's father's line, I would, once arriving there, um, I'd say ancestors, I am Cater Stevenson Brown. I am son of Nora Edwards Brown. I'm grandson of Thomas Edwards Brown. So I've identified the line that I'm headed, that I'm going down. So I've named that particular grandfather. Um, and I wish to meet an ancestral helping spirit uh, grandfather in this line. I'm not, don't know that it will be him. I'm just asking for one to come forward. Um, of a sense that one comes forward. And at that point, I may reconfirm, you know, uh, are you my grandfather? If you get a yes, that's the intent. You get a yes. Um, are you well in spirit? And of course, we're in the realm of the helping spirit. So you should get a yes. Um, Grandfather, I wish to get to know you. I wish to, what is the blessing of our line? Um, and something will happen. Um, if you are going down a line that you wish to ask for healing, or you feel something has been interrupted in the line, connection to the sacred, connection to the spirit realm, we could say like in, in that we're talking this in this uh, talk, you could say, uh, Grandfather, will you assist me in healing those places in our line where we were forced to separate from the sacred? And, and as we know, in a lot of different lines that happen for many different reasons, to mend those places so that I can remember um, and reconnect. Um, and I'll have an experience. Um, there'll be words, it'll be a journey, or there'll be something. Um, and then I'll, uh, so I'm, that's the, the process. I won't be speaking once I rattle, but that's the process of choosing the point of departure, traveling to the realm of the ancestral helping spirits, um, identifying yourself um, and your line that you're going down, and then asking to connect with that helping spirit. And then uh, if you can, even if you only retrieve the blessing, you know, that's, that's good enough. Um, but if you get as far as, you know, is there a teaching 
in this line that you have for me. And, and if there's a request um, for healing to make that as well. Okay. And so we will make this, uh, we'll do, this will be a, a short journey. And it's one, if you don't finish it now and you want to do this again, you can, now you know the setup, you can do the journey again. Um, but I'm going to start the, uh, start the rattle and, uh, and then I'll call you back with the faster rhythm. So when you're ready, just close your eyes and go to that departure point that you're going to travel up. And I'll call you back in a few minutes.
uh, take your time and come back when you're ready. <clears throat> so that was a rather short journey, and it may be one that folks out there need to do several times. Uh, rattling and journeying is easier than drumming and journey. You can actually do it for yourself fairly easy. Um, but I encourage you to, to uh, do that journey with at least one of your lines, as we suggested, to make that connection, um, to uh, re retrieve the blessing of that line or the teaching of that line, and also a healing request if there is one in terms of what, what, what uh, trouble or turmoil or disconnections exist between that helping spirit and you. And, and the, however, how much space is in there, how many generations, that's not important that we know that. Um, but to make that request. So I'm curious, were you able to go very far with that, Jocelyn? Yeah, I, I was, I was very, I, I, I'm still trying to um, fully receive what I saw because it was not what I was expecting, <laughs> I guess, which is a good sign. Yeah. Um, it was, took me to a land that I'm not aware is part of my lineage mm -hmm. um, and showed me, yeah, it showed me something about my role here that mm -hmm. I was not aware of. So it was really, mm -hmm. it was very powerful. Yeah. And as you have a sense of connecting with a specific ancestral helping spirit in terms of what they wore, what they look like, or? I did. I did. I couldn't. It was a, a female. I couldn't mm -hmm. see what she was wearing exactly, but she was very, she was laughing a lot, mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. jovial and very short, you know, and mm -hmm. very um, connected with the earth, you know, is like mm -hmm. what I felt from her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and very old. She seemed mm -hmm. maybe, I don't know, I would think 80 or 90 years old in the form. Right. Right. So yeah, taking uh, journaling, like taking some time after you do the journey to write like um, what they look like, what did the land look like, just as mm -hmm. as you're getting to know them, you're getting to know the place. And, and so when you have regular connection with them, it's like, oh yeah, I know eventually there may be a name um, other than grandmother. Um, or maybe just grandmother, but there's there's a a recognition that develops, a relationship that develops of like um, connecting with this one and the blessings that are carried there. Um, and then doing the healing work. And we'll say for the for, for the purpose or intent of this particular summit, you know, healing the places in our line where separation from the sacred occurred. Um, either by difficult choice or trauma or dislocation or having to move or whatever it was that, that, um, that led to that disconnection. Um, and I mean, if, if you live in America and you certainly have four, at least four lines, there's certainly disconnections in some of them. Um, and so the, those healing, those, places of separation from the, the ancient ways, the ancient, the ancient uh, relationships with earth and nature and connection. Um, so you journal, do a lot of journaling, and it's maybe a journey that you do several times. And I wanna give you a ritual prescription. So when we, um, the way that I do it is when I do a journey of this nature to, with this intent, uh, there is what I call a ritual reenactment in the physical. That was a non-physical journey where I go to, to the realm of the ancestors. And the way to bring that into the physical plane is with ritual. Ritual is the, uh, the communication from there to here. And um, so there's a ritual prescription that goes with, that I use with the ancestral lines here, uh, clearing, is that once you have those pieces, um, say the blessing, the teaching, and particularly the, what, the request for healing, and specifically maybe certain healing requests that you've asked of this grandmother or grandfather, um, is that uh, you enact this ritual. And for the ritual, you'll need a ring. And we're going to call the ring your ancestor ring. 
It doesn't mean it's a ring that came from your ancestors. It's a ring that when you look at it, it uh, and not necessarily this specific one, because it's a ring you can eventually work with all your ancestors, but it's relationship with ancestors. Mm -hmm. So it's a ring that speaks to you of relationship to ancestors, whether you find it, somebody gives it to you, you see it in a, uh, a novelty store, whatever, it's, it will speak to you when you see it. So the ring, the ancestor ring. Uh, the other thing you'll need for the ritual is some red yarn. I was looking to see if I had some handy. Um, and uh, seven feet of red yarn to represent seven generations. And seven actually is a reference to and beyond. Um, so the seven is that symbolic of that number two. So seven generations and beyond. So seven feet of red yarn. And to get a, uh, a piece of uh, unpolished rose quartz. Um, the rose quartz is the rose quartz, you know, the energy of rose quartz being love and compassion and um, holds the, the connection and the frequency of that particular ancestor that you just called in, the one of your former relationships. So this is the physical mineral, minerals about communication, information, transponder and transceiver of, of wisdom and healing as we understand the sacred aspects of mineral. Um, and so unpolished rose quartz to be, to represent the connection with that ancestral helping spirit. So the ring, the yarn, the rose quartz. Um, and then you do this ritual on the um, first of the new moon nights. So there's three dark nights. Um, the first of the dark nights, um, if you can go to a place where there's um, gently running water, be a small creek um, somewhere, and somewhere where somebody's not going to come in and see, oh, isn't that a cool looking stone? I would like to have that <laughs> and take it. So somewhere you feel fairly secure that you can do this. But you go there um, on the first of the new moon nights. Um, if you, don't, if you can't make a fire, you light a candle and you speak an invocation. And the invocation is, you know, grandmother, uh, grandmother of, and whatever you know about this grandmother, um, thank you for the blessing of and for the teachings of. Um, and grandmother, assist me in healing the places between where you are and where I am, where there's been uh, trauma or brokenness in, in connection with the sacred or whatever things that you may be working with healing in that line. You name those things. And so the invocation is what opens the door of connection. Then you go to where the water is with your um, stone yarn and, and ring. Tie one end of the yarn to the stone, hence why it's unpolished. It's really hard to tie yarn around a polished stone. <laughs> Somebody asked me that one time, what's the significance of unpolished? So, well, it's because your yarn won't slip off of it. Practical applications. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, you've got you to be practical, otherwise it'll slide right off. <laughs> it comes from trying to tie yarn around polished down, it's really hard. Um, and then uh, at the other end of the yarn, down to seven, seven feet, seven generations down and beyond, you tie the rink. These things set in the water with the, the, the stone being upstream so that the water travels across the stone, across the generations and down to the ring and across the ring, which is where your connection is. You take, you uh, also bring some milk and honey and you pour that across the stone so that the uh, sweetness and healing travels down the line. Again, this is the ritual enactment of the healing request. So you're bringing it into the physical, you pour the, the uh, milk and honey across the stone so it, it goes down across the line and then you leave it in the water for those three nights mm -hmm. you come back on the fourth um, fourth morning and retrieve the ring and the stone the yarn can be put in fire in other words it can be burned up but you have the ring at that moment you put the ring on and you put it on your finger around your neck around your wrist your ankle your toe you just put it on your person somewhere. And, um, and the stone, uh, that particular rose quartz stone that connects to that particular grandmother in your case, 
um, can sit on an ancestor altar, or you may want to, during the ritual period, which is going to be initially a month, you can even just set it beside your bed. Um, and the ring goes on, and during, uh, up until the full moon, so you wear the ring, at least until the full moon. And during that time, you know, paying attention to your dreams, uh, journaling, connecting with this grandmother, just noticing what happens and what information is coming through. Um, at the full moon, um, there's a celebratory meal. And simply that means to uh, receiving guidance from this ancestor, what would have been the foods that they would have eaten or have liked. Um, you know, when I do those kind of meals, there's always certain things. There's chocolate, there's Irish brown bread, there's some Irish whiskey, usually. And there's a couple of other things I know that were prominent, potatoes. <laughs> um, and so I'd prepare a meal of celebration and gratitude and I'd fix a spirit plate for the ancestors. Um, and the purpose of and the intent of the, and the meal is one of uh, gratitude and celebration and, and thank you for these, for helping me remember these blessings and for the healing um, that, that we've activated. Um, and the other important thing, uh, once you do the ritual, is that that question I asked in the beginning for people when they leave this is ask yourself the question, um, now that this ritual is complete, what actions am I guided to take, in, you know, following like tomorrow? Keep them close in, not like with my life because we can get lost when that's too big. Um, but tomorrow, this week, tonight with my children, whatever, just keep it close in. And it's not important that you understand the actions. They may seem, hmm, not even sure what that's about. It seems kind of irrelevant in some way, but I, I'll do it anyway. I say, as long as it's within your integrity to take the action, take the action. Um, and then not watch what happens. Because what you're doing is you're putting yourself on a, a communication pathway of developing trust with ancestor helping source where you're listening, receiving guidance, and responding. And that deepens the connection. Um, when they see that you respond to the, the things you don't understand, then they give you more things. So it opens up communication. Um, and so that's the, after the, the month, you know, you can um, continue to wear the ring indefinitely. You can even work with your ideals that, uh, the ideal is that you have four, at least four specific ancestral helping spirits that you work with. Each one carries a different blessing from a different line. Um, and there may be different things that need healing in that line. And also remember any ancestral healing that you do benefits those in the line in front of you and behind you. So we mean your children would benefit from any healing work you do with the ancestors and the ones on the other side that are in turmoil benefit from that work. Um, so it's also a good way to assist uh, loved ones in our family when we're not able to, to reach them directly is to do ancestral healing work because we know that's going to impact them even if they don't know about it. So any questions? Is the, uh, the ritual pretty self-explanatory explanatory that I've laid it out? Yeah, I think it's very clear. Thank you for all of this. Really You're powerful. welcome. You're and welcome. Um, I definitely would encourage people to go back and do the journey. Yes. One, two, three, four more times because there's so much, feels like there's just so much to be uncovered there. Yeah, really don't rush it. Take the, the relationship is really important to establish before the ritual. So that when you call out, when your invocation, you call that grandmother, grandfather, you have a sense of, you know, that, that one showing up. You, you know who they are. They know who you are. So going slow. Um, and I would say, because this, this video will go out to lots of people in lots of places, um, a way to shift it, if, you, if you're not where you have access to, or, you know, streams and water and nature, um, you can do this uh, in a place in your house. I would say get some kind of... Um, long, I'm going to look and make sure my hands are on the screen, a, a longer pan um, that you can put 
a spring water in, that's not, not uh, chloride water, but you know, spring water that you can buy at the store. Um, add um, a, uh, yeah, and setting the items in that, um, and then pouring the milk and honey um, into and across the line all the way down to the ring um, and leaving it um, in a darkened space during the, the new moon. So I know for some people that live in apartments or cities, it's like, how am I gonna do this? It's like, well, spring water, milk and honey, just a, a, lo a longer basin you can put it all in. Use seven inches instead of seven feet. Um, so you don't have, you know, a swimming pool in your apartment that you're trying to work with. <laughs> um, but just, uh, you know, improvise and be creative with, with the, with the, the ritual enactment. It's the, the connection and relationship is the key. The ritual enactment is just simply a way to ground it in the physical. Um, and to know that your intention will come through. Yes, yes. In whatever form is, is right for you to do it. Absolutely. Yeah, and if you get, if you get other guidance and say, well, he didn't say anything about that, you know, listen to your, listen to your ancestors. They may add something in. Right. Um, so trust that. Okay, well, this, <sighs> this is, as I said, really powerful and um, gives us just a very, um, very concrete kind of way mm -hmm. to really connect in, you know, to do this journey mm -hmm. a few different times and then to have, do the new moon ritual, mm -hmm. do the full moon, full moon ceremony with the mm -hmm. dinner. Really beautiful. Yeah, and then again, the the one ring can serve for all the ancestral lines. You get if you do an other lines, you get a different stone and and repeat. Do one at a time, um, and really, yeah, develop that relationship, and and it will, you will be just surprised at at. Uh, I used to tell people. You know, we think unemployment is high in this, in where we live. It's like in the realm of the ancestors, unemployment is incredibly high and they don't want much for pay. <laughs> it's like they're just available to work. So. Yeah. Yes. Well, hopefully a lot more of us will be connecting in with them and they will, they'll have a lot more work to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Cater, so much for sharing your wisdom. It's always so wonderful to talk with you and, receive this this kind of wisdom from you um, oh, thank you jocelyn it's been fun to be here yes yes and um i do want to share your about your free gift with everybody and so could you say a few words about that free gift and how it works yeah well it's kind of a two-part free gift um so if you go to the um click on the um the button where you uh, just sign up for the newsletter you get an automatic free gift gift which is a ebook um, but then your name will be entered into a drawing. Indicate in, when you're signing up that you're part of this particular summit. Um, and then you will, um, your name will be entered into a drawing in which I will draw three names, not just one, but I'll, I'll draw three times um, for people to receive a um, free cowrie shell divination. So it's uh, an hour long process that we'll do online like this. Um, and then there's uh, some written information that describes, you know, answers to question, what is a, what is a divination? What is a calorie shell divination? And you could read about that on the website. Okay, wonderful. So three, three names will be chosen then out yep. of the entries that you get here. Okay. Well, wonderful. That's a very generous gift. And as, as people can uh, imagine from having heard this ritual and the, everybody will receive so much from that divination, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's exciting. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, well, thank you again for having me here. Yes, thank you so much for being a part of this. I know you mentioned you're heading out into the forest soon after, so blessings on your thank you. journey and all that you'll be doing there. Thank you, Jocelyn. Yeah, headed just to uh, finish packing as soon as we get off the computer here and head into the woods. <laughs> yes, very good. Okay, mm -hmm. well, thank you again, Cater, and thank you, Not everybody. Awesome for yeah. ending um, and hope you have received so much from this from this talk. Thanks everyone for joining in and a love and blessings go well.